pleasure to introduce Professor Aftab Ahmad the, uh, of the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science at John Jay College. Uh, Professor, you can take it away. Thank you so much, Megan. I really appreciate your office forward for this on behalf of the students, the departments, and uh, thank you so much to our guests today. Uh, we'll start right away. And uh, I will, you know, let the guests introduce themselves, but I would say that please do more than that. When you introduce yourself, please also tell us where you work and what kind of work you do and uh, how the degree at John Jay College helped you at work. So let me say, Aisha, can you, can we start with you? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi guys, I'm Aisha. Um, so I graduated from John Jay about two years ago. So in 2019, May, 2019, uh, and I moved to Maryland after that. And I got my first full-time job there uh, as a junior software engineer. Uh, and now I'm actually working at Deloitte currently. And what I'm doing right now is I'm a solution consultant. Um, so basically, let me just explain a little bit about Deloitte. So Deloitte has like four main functions, which are like audit and assurance, consulting, financial risk and advisory, and task text uh, services. So I'm a part of the risk and financial advisory um, function, basically, and I'm aligned to cybersecurity or the cyber and strategic risk. So essentially, I deal with uh, cybersecurity related services uh, at Deloitte, um, and that's essentially what we offer our clients. Uh, help with. Um, so the way Deloitte works is that you have to apply for roles internally within the company. Um, so essentially, like you're assigned a resource manager and like a coach to help you apply for jobs internally. And it could be like in a variety of different like roles. It could be in software development. It could be in uh, pen testing, um, you know, uh, things of that nature. And so currently, since I'm only three months in at Deloitte, I've been working to uh, working on projects to develop uh, risk screening reports for like a global healthcare company, for example. And uh, we do it based on like a specified um, uh, specified risk domains that include cybersecurity. Um, so that's currently what, what I'm working on right now. Uh, and I would say like, as far as like how my degree in CS, uh, CI helped, I would say that like during my transition to Deloitte, like while I was going through the interview process, um, you know, I had a lot of like um, questions about like what kind of a technical experience I had. And I got to like bring up a lot of uh, the projects that I worked on, uh, like when it comes to, you know, Python and all the programming languages that I worked with, as well as, um, my uh, my uh, as well as well as the courses that I took in cybersecurity, which were like the capstone courses that were really essential that uh, kind of helped me talk about it during the interview and that really helped me get my foot in the door um, through to uh, Deloitte. So that's what I would say. Super. Well, thank you so much. Um, Joe, would you like to go you know, introduce yourself and what you do at work and um... Uh, where you work and uh, how the degree helped you. Or helped yeah, sure. You. Sure. Thanks, Aftab. So my name is Joe Mazella. I'm currently a manager at KPMG, which is a very similar company to uh, Aisha's. They're actually a direct competitor to ours. Uh, I work in their advisory services department, and that's basically a fancy word for consulting. So I have a list of clients that I go to to help them solve their cybersecurity issues. And that can range from network security, data loss prevention, um, identity management, um, basically anything cyber, um, we go in and we help them um, with whatever project or initiative they're working on. Uh, my main focus at KPMG is insider threat, which means any internal user, either a full-time employee or a contractor who tries to do anything that violates policy or basically break the rules of the company. Um, I focus on how to better identify who those users are, how to better detect them, and how to better respond to that type of risk uh, that insiders cause. Uh, my degree in CSCI 
definitely helped me get the job I have now. Um, similar to what Aisha said, uh, it didn't teach me how to do my job, but it taught me how to speak the language that is cybersecurity, knowing the different concepts, the foundational topics, um, how to speak the language, um, which really helped in an interview. Because if you're talking to a, a hiring manager who lives and breathes cybersecurity, they're going to expect you to know certain buzzwords and how to uh, navigate a security level conversation. Super, thank you. Uh, Teresa, would you like to go? Yes, of course. Thank you, Rathab. Hi, everybody. My name is Teresa, and um, I graduated from John Jay in 2019. Um, my current role is at Accenture, and I work as an IT analyst. It's a fancy word for a help desk, basically. But um, I would Accenture, I've been with Accenture for four months now as a contractor. Um, prior to working with Accenture, um, I worked as a vendor with Bloomberg and mainly I did um, help, the, um, help tech support as well as um, working directly uh, with the users. So generally speaking, uh, my current role is um, specifically customer service focused. Um, I work directly with the users in the office, uh, whether it's remote or um, you know, in person. Uh, one thing is uh, working at Accenture. I, you know, I, I learned a lot regarding um, how to uh, work directly with the technologies. There's a lot of opportunities when it comes to uh, learning uh, as you're entering or transition into the role. Um, the focus of the company is mainly IT services and consultant. And I'm working in the IT services um, department, uh, mainly focusing on hardware support, um, networking, and um, uh, customer service, as um, of course. Um, how as uh, my degree at, you know, John Jay helped me um, with my role, I would say uh, it really helped me understanding the concept of um, the industry, uh, learning more about the technologies and understanding um, what role that I should go for in the beginning and um, how I should interact and communicate with people in the industry as well. So these are certain things that I would look into when it comes to, um, generally speaking, as a, you know, as a, when I was a student at John Jay and transitioning into a new role um, in the computer science industry. Yeah. Super. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So um, my next question from all of you is, um, how can students leverage the university resources and faculty to succeed in this field? So Joe, would you like to start? Sure. So this is a question that I really like because John Jay does have resources that are available to students. Um, one resource that you could leverage is definitely the resume workshops that the college offers, helping you understand what a good resume looks like. Um, as a manager at KPMG, I am responsible for reviewing resumes and conducting interviews as part of our recruitment efforts. And one thing that always annoys me is when resumes aren't formatted right, or they're many, many pages long, it's obvious that they didn't do a lot of research into what a good resume should look like. And I think John Jay does have that capability to help you. Um, but that being said, because computer science is a technical field, you also have your professors available, like um, Professor Oftab, he always makes himself available to students to either ask questions or review resumes as well. So I'm not saying everybody flood Oftab with your resumes, but the college does have resources to help you and also your professors are there to help you really get a good understanding for what a resume looks like, how to navigate the job process. I don't know, Aisha or Teresa, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I want to add. Um, okay. Do you want to go first or? Um, sure, why not? So one thing I would like to say is kind of narrow down the um, overload of um, the things that you would like to experience regarding uh, your resume and the roles that you'd like to tackle. Um, there's a great amount of um, 
information that are available to you, which um, that you should be able to take advantage of. But um, the ability to kind of narrow that down and um, uh, focus on um, on the road that you would like to tackle is one thing that I would say that you should um, take advantage of. And also, uh, as Joe mentioned, see your faculties as um, often as possible when it comes to um, going uh, about uh, updating your resumes and um, staying in um, relevant with what you uh, with with your experiences as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to add on to it. Um, so similar to what like Joe and Teresa was were saying, um, I think it's important to to talk to your like uh, professors and stuff to uh, kind of get an understanding of. Uh, the different roles in IT because there's like a lot of roles and I feel like before I graduated I didn't like completely understand that I was just kind of like oh okay my my degree is computer science that means I'm going to be pursuing a career in like uh, uh, in, uh, in programming you know and that's really what I thought initially but then when I got in got my first job and stuff like I got exposed to like QA testing and like uh, you know, networking and like cybersecurity, you know, so there's so many different roles out there. I feel like it's important to talk to your like professors about it to, to kind of get an understanding of that if you don't, you know. That's a really good point and something I faced as well. Like, yeah, you come out with computer science degree, you think you're going to get a computer science job and that that's the title of the job. It's computer science. But being in the field for four years plus you understand that computer science is like this massive umbrella. Cybersecurity is this smaller umbrella, but it's still massive. So there's no such thing as a cybersecurity job either, because that's broken down into like 50, 60 different categories. So yeah, well, you're definitely right. Talk to your professors, get an understanding of what they do, what backgrounds they might have before they came to be professors. If they have jobs outside of professing, is definitely important to try to narrow down what you really want to do with your career. Absolutely. I, I agree to all of you. As a matter of fact, the what is the meaning of cybersecurity has been changing and it will keep changing. Wonderful. So we have some wonderful questions and we will come to those questions. In the end, uh, I have uh, two more questions. My next question is that, uh, what are some of the outside of the classroom skills? that you will recommend the students try to get to succeed in this field. So Teresa, do you want to go first? I, I said, Teresa, I'm sorry. I, I hear you a little different. It's a Teresa, right? Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, repeat the question for me, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so what are some of the outside of classroom skills? that students can gain while being students that will be helpful for them in this field? Yes, of course. Um, I would say I have a lot of um, your an analytical skills. It's very important in problem, sol um, problem solving. Um, when you're working in the um, tech industry, that's something that, uh, that I would recommend to have uh, due to the amount of uh, issues that you would in, you know, encounter regarding uh, uh, the role, depending on the role that you would be um, working in, whether it's uh, development or IT, uh, project management, um, cybersecurity, all of that, um, all of that is important when it comes to uh, a DAT role that you would tackle. So yeah, definitely uh, problem solving and analy uh, analytical. Yeah. Very good, very good. Aisha, would you like to go next? Yeah, I wanna add on to that. Um, I was gonna say like uh, before, when I was in college, um, I feel like, you know, one thing I didn't, I wasn't very good at or like in class I would you know raise my hand if I have any questions or like um, you know just do my assignments and just like get through the day just to get an A right but then uh, in the real world like when you're interacting with teams there may be instances where you like you don't know what you're doing and you're just like completely confused and you have all these questions right and there were so many times where I would uh, not ask questions because I would be like, oh, let me just figure this out myself. Like, I don't need to bother any of my team members, you know, and that's kind of like how I thought about it. But then I there were times where I'd spend like days just trying to figure something out when I could have just reached out and just uh, communicated that, you know, I was having issues 
uh, and like that uh, that that conversation like solved so many problems or like um, uh, answered so many questions that I had. So I think communication is like key and um, being able to converse with your team team members and uh, collaborate with them is is something that's an important skill and you know knowing how to communicate. So yeah. Excellent, uh, Joe. What would you like to say? Yeah, I think those are very good points and definitely needed that you can't really learn in a college setting. Uh, one other aspect um, skill that I want to add to that is public speaking. So John Jay, I did get a course in public speaking. It wasn't the best because we didn't really do a lot of public speaking. We public spoke probably like once or twice throughout the whole course. Um, but now in the field I'm in, in consulting, we're constantly talking to clients, talking to our bosses, talking to the most senior leaders at these big Fortune 500 companies, um, telling them what they need to do and basically telling them what's wrong with their company and how they can fix it. And my first year, two years, I couldn't do it. It was so hard um, just getting up in front of people. Um, it was before COVID, so it was all in person. So standing in the front of this boardroom, talking to the CISO of name this company, telling them what we found, it's nerve wracking and very anxious to do that. But as I kind of went on with my career and got some more experience, um, it definitely helped. And now I don't freak out before calls anymore, which is definitely good. But I think that's something everybody should work on inside and outside the classroom is volunteering, getting up, speaking what you want to speak about. Even if it is scary and if you screw up a million times, as long as you get better at it, it's perfect. Wow. You know, I, I see the same. Uh, Aisha, let me just uh, uh, make a note here that I hear a common thread here. You know, uh, Teresa said role. Aisha said team. Joe said public. So it's basically how you work with others and how you recognize your role. That's the key. Aisha, sorry to cut you, go ahead. Oh no, I just wanted to like comment on what Joe was saying. Um, that's actually something that I'm like uh, worried about like at Deloitte because I haven't like worked directly with clients yet. I'm still like in a team. So that's something that I'm like afraid to do, but um, I still want to do it just to have that experience. Cause I think once you get that, once you get that experience that really like, you know, it's a game changer, I think, right? So. Oh, it totally is. And it's something that for me, at least it came organically. So I wasn't thrown in front of a client and said, here, here's this deck, go tell them what's wrong and see how they react. It was more like, oh, my manager will go and speak. And then <laughs> as I kind of went up and up in the ranks, I started taking on one call, which turned into two calls. And I was actually doing like a look back on myself um, a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I'm running all these calls by myself with no other leadership on. I'm the most senior person from my company on this call right now. And I'm fine. And I was like shocked with just how it happened. So it will happen. It'll be organic. And you'll have a look back to one day and be like, wow, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very yeah, good. and definitely uh, don't be afraid to take initiative uh, when it comes to uh, working on projects together as a team. That's how you learn, and that's how it becomes easier over time. Especially if you, um, especially in the tech field, you tend to um, get thrown into very large teams where you have to work with people and you have to interact with people on a daily basis and you have to lead at time because your role doesn't. Um, rely specifically on just being a team member sometimes it's um it's necessary for you to take initiative fantastic well very, very good answers you know i i totally agree that's what my experience says so so before we get to the questions now i want to ask you something about uh, how to get into the workforce right so what are the, some of the tips to get your foot in the door some websites some you know, tricks of the trade. Because joining the workforce is one of the biggest challenge these students are going to have now. So Aisha, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think one thing that I did, didn't do um, uh, after graduation was like start applying before graduating. Uh, Cause I, I know like they say like apply early, like in September so that you can, you know, start getting, uh, 
start getting like interviews and stuff. But I wasn't like on top of that. Um, so after graduation, I started applying uh, through like Indeed and uh, putting my resume up on Dice. Um, I kind of, what I did was I mass applied. So I just like applied to a bunch of like developer positions or, you know, a security related position just so I can like get my foot in the door. Um, and I also applied through like LinkedIn. Um, and another thing that's really big um, is referrals. Like if you can, if you know someone who's already in the workforce and you can kind of get in contact with them and be like, hey, like, uh, is there a way like you can, you know, refer me? I think that's, that's a big thing because I noticed that whenever like I did um, get it through like a referral pr program, like they called me immediately. Um, the recruiters. So I think um, if you have people, if you know people, I think that's what it, that's why it's important to network. So you could just do that. Um, but um, I think yeah, that was my those were my main ways of like getting my foot through the door. And I think I got my first job through and uh, uh, by applying through Indeed, and they found me through that. And oh, and another thing is staffing companies. Um, I was also like, I started interviewing through a staffing company and they found positions for me. Uh, and they basically, you know, found the positions that I, exactly what I was looking for and got interviews for me. So I think that's another way to do that. Joe, would you like to go ahead for next? Yeah, um, Aisha, I, oh, I guess you followed in my footsteps because I did the exact same thing. <laughs> When I graduated in 2016, I started applying in June of 2016 because I thought that's how it's done. I graduated, I got the degree, now I'll apply for a job, logical steps. But you hit the nail on the head, you gotta start applying like September of your senior year um, because that's when companies are hiring, that's when they're looking, they're doing their interviews. Um, but I did the same thing. I went on Indeed, applied to a million and 47 jobs, got like a couple of callbacks, because when you do that mass apply, you're not treating every job with the attention that you should. Um, every um, application process, you should try to tailor your resume to the job you're going for and the company you're going to try to go and get. Um, but I just blanket applied like you did, um, blew a ton of interviews because I didn't know how to interview. Um, but I think the biggest thing to do to get your foot in the door is, like we mentioned before, try to figure out where in cybersecurity you want to sit or computer science in general, where do you want to be? Do you want to be a programmer? Great. Do you want to do front-end web development, back-end web development? Do you want to do component programming? Find, a diff find one of the areas that you're interested in and really go for that area. And if you have one or two or five or 10, that's fine. As long as it's not the 500 that make up computer science. Um, again, to Ayush's point, networking is key. Um, in this field, it doesn't matter what you know, it's who you know. That's how you get your foot in the door, is somebody saying, yeah, I like you, I wanna work with you. Let's try to get you in my company. Uh, I think that's gonna be the biggest thing to really help you get that job. Um, not saying if you don't know anybody, you'll never get a job, you'll still try to find something and you'll probably be successful. But having that network, having somebody to pull you in, that's how I got my job. And I think I would have been waiting probably another couple of months three, six months if I didn't have somebody help me out. Yeah, awesome. uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Joe, I completely agree with you and Aisha. And I wanted to add that um, with, you know, with building your networks, it's extremely important to do that because um, while you are in school and you're interacting with different um, with different groups and different people, it's important to, to have um, that set of network that, that are able to uh, refer you to certain positions. Um, I wanted to add that a lot of companies out there are hiring internally. So it's pretty challenging to be sure that you would get a position whether you feel like you qualify for it right away. So what, what I would suggest is um, try and uh, narrow down the roles in the company that you would uh, apply to and make sure that these companies uh, fit your um, preferences regarding cultures and as well as um, the role that you would like to um, intake. And if there's also um, growth in the company when it comes to um, 
uh, doing better in the role or if you were to start uh, 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 at the beginning stage um, uh, of a new role, it's best to start at a company that, um, that, um, that provides the opportunity to grow and to learn. Um, you could start at a startup, you could start at uh, another um, small uh, uh, company, uh, personal companies, uh, independent companies. Um, these are great uh, companies to apply to when you're um, starting out in computer science. Um, another thing I would like to add is um, don't be afraid to um, contact a recruiter if you see that they're working at a company and that's something that you'd be interested in don't wait for them to contact you i would say take initiative and say hey this is a company that i'm very interested in i really like the role that's currently posting uh, posted on the website or uh, the company's website and i would like to apply and i would like an interview um, these are things that I did personally for me to get certain roles that I started right after graduation. I took initiative. I contacted um, recruiters. Um, I was referred um, in my very first, to my very first role after graduation. And after that, um, I believed uh, I wanted to move forward into uh, my role. So I you know, I talked to my manager and I decided to um, move forward to another organization uh, while learning a lot more. So, uh, so basically what I mean is that take initiative and um, make sure that you know exactly the role that you're going for and uh, don't be afraid to um, ask questions and, and speak directly to uh, recruiters and narrow down the roles um, when it comes to applying for uh, positions that you'd like to apply to. Very good. So, so basically, you know, um, apply early and uh, try multiple sources. I would say that uh, while you're a student, try to get internships. So they will really help. They will really get the foot in the door before you actually need to enter the room, right? So that's, a, that's very helpful as well. So we have a, a bunch of questions. Uh, 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 before we move on, Aftab, I have a question that's in the same vein as that last question. Um, mm -hmm. And just for fun, and I think I might win this one, but <laughs> for Isa and Ayesha, how long did it take you to get your first full-time job after graduating? Three months. All right. Um, well, for me, it was kind of tricky because um, I, when I was still my during my senior year, I was applying while I was, you know, completing my um, my degree. Um, I started as as a vendor, so mostly like field uh, a field position in order for me to gain the experience in order for me to transition into a full time position. So it was more like a, a tactical process for me um, in the beginning. So it didn't take long for me to transition from one position to another or from graduating to another position. Um, I would say after graduating, I started working in the field um, immediately. Okay. So I, I did win. I took a year <laughs> and three months to get my job, my first full-time job after graduating. So if you don't get a job directly out of college, don't freak out. It'll come. Um, yeah, just keep working hard. Process. Yeah. And I I just want to add on to that. I guess like um, when you're in, in that stage where you're just like uh, trying to apply for jobs and if it's taking long, it doesn't matter. You can always like do certifications. You can, uh, you know, go through like Udemy, uh, do courses, you know, those are additional ways that you can, um, you know, learn and show that you're, you're still doing something even after graduation. Yeah. And one more thing to add is be humble, understand what your experience level is coming out of college. It's pretty much zero. Um, so don't think you're going to go out and get a $150,000 job right out of college. It's very unlikely. If you do it, great. Um, I want to talk to you, but <laughs> if you don't, don't freak out. I have a friend who graduated from CUNY Hunter with computer science and he was one of these people who say, I'm not going for a job that pays less than 95,000. I'm going to pass them. No way. I'm not doing it. And guess what? He didn't get a job paying 95,000. He wasted 
he graduated in 2017. He wasted four years looking for a job because he was so set on that number and wanted that prestige that was never going to come because he didn't have any experience to back it up. And then the longer he waited, the worse he looked because he had this big gap, but then finally got a job because of a referral. And now he's making under 70. So waiting that long because he was kind of cocky, it, it was a waste of time. So know your worth, add a little bit, and then settle. Because if you have a misunderstanding of where your worth is, you're going to have a hard time finding a job. Yeah, there's And a... that'll change. Like as you grow and get more experience, your worth will keep going up based on that experience and your knowledge. Sorry, Aisha, I cut you off. No, no, I cut you off. I was going to say, like, there's this, I don't know, I think I saw this on LinkedIn, but it was like, you just need, you need to find a job that um, either pays well or gives you a lot of, like, knowledge or you're learning a lot from it. So you just have to, like, weigh, balance that out and weigh which one you want, you know? And like like he said, like, it's going to take... It, it's hard to find a job that's going to pay you like 95K for your first job. Like you barely have any experience. So at that point you need to learn, right? So uh, choose the learning over the, the uh, salary. <laughs> wow, I love how Roseanne just put in the chat, know your worth, add a little, then settle. Quote of the evening. <laughs> Everyone is free to use that, but I want to be attributed to it. Like the, you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. I want that to be one of those no well-known quotes. <laughs> That's my legacy. It, 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 it's very realistic. And, you know, as you mentioned, it's based on experience, Jack, right? Luckily, it was not your own experience. Yes. <laughs> that, that's a good thing. And we don't want it to be anybody else's experience to, to learn this from experience. We are here to learn from their experience, right? So we, we have a bunch of questions. So, so Benga, do you uh, chose any questions? Uh... Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so first off, I wanted to uh, thank you all for answering these questions and sharing your insights. Um, Joe, we'll definitely put that, we'll, we'll probably start like an alumni quote of the week or something like that, <laughs> and, and we'll get it up there. Um, but, you know, uh, thank you to everyone who asked uh, some really thoughtful questions. Um, we'll try to get to, We'll try to get to all of them. Um, we'll see, you know, how much time we have. But um, the first one is um, besides uh, coursework or projects that you did um, at John Jay, what else helped you prepare for technical interviews that you had? Um, Teresa, do you want to take this one to start? Yeah, sure. Um, one thing that I did is there's a lot of information online regarding um, interviewing processes. Um, depending on the role that you're applying to, it differs. Um, the length of interviews could be one interview, two interviews, but standard, it's four interviews. Um, there's the uh, technical interviews. There, there's the um, you know character built interview where you uh, interact with the recruiter and managers and uh, uh, getting a testing process in order for you to um, in order for you to qualify for the role to you know for the manager to decide if you qualify for the role. Um, one thing I did is um, I look at courses online uh, at Udemy and um, YouTube in order for me to narrow down the specific role that I would apply for and get the uh, questions that I know that uh, the, 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 um, uh, the interviewer would ask. Um, but as far as questions, uh, they're very similar, I would say that. Um, but the main thing that I would point out is uh, know exactly what you um, speaking about know the 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 know, know your role um like the back of your hand because that's very important and um yeah so that's one of the things that i would like to say yeah well that's great thank you um joe do you want to take this one too uh sure um, can you just repeat the question for me again? Oh, of I course. see it. Yeah, so of course. Left the, uh, so, the question uh, hands, besides a coursework or projects um, that you participated in at John Jay, what else helped you prepare um, for any technical interviews that you may have had? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give an unconventional answer here and say <laughs> blow a lot of interviews. The first 10, 15, I blew. <laughs> they were 
awful. They went so bad. One was so bad. They were asking me technical questions. I didn't know. And I was Googling them while I'm talking to the <laughs> recruiter. And it was so obvious. It was so obvious. Everyone knew the recruiter knew. And surprisingly enough, I didn't get the job. <laughs> but um, I think taking those first two or three or five interviews, get a feel for what people start asking. They are very common interview questions that everybody asks. What are your ports and services? What do you know about cyber? Tell me a little bit about um, access management. Uh, some things will be very repetitive. Um, so get an understanding for what those are and then start practicing answering those questions. Um, I can't speak a lot to whiteboard interviews for coding because I'm not in a coding, not in a programming field, but I know they ask similar questions as well. The scenarios will change, but the underlying question um, and task will stay the same. Like build me an array, throw things into a stack and then bring them out. Um, those are just two topics that I remember from my time at John Jay, but I haven't touched programming since. Uh, but yeah, just practice, practice, practice. And yes, don't be afraid to fail. It will happen. Yeah. It's going to happen yeah. a lot in your life. So get used to it. There's only one way to get better, right? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Fail forward and upwards. <laughs> Oh God, another quote, another quote of the week. <laughs> I stole that from other people. That's a, I can't take credit for that one. <laughs> Aisha, did you want to um, add to this? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say like, I agree with um, Joe, like 100%. That's basically what happened to me. Like I had to fail a lot of interviews and just like, I guess I was, I mean, embarrass myself. Um, but like, you once you actually do that you get familiar with like what kind of questions they ask because it's similar in a lot of cases and um and like oh i guess another thing i'd say is um you know you can always like review material like i did one cert before like applying for deloitte and like uh, they did ask me questions like uh related to cybersecurity, like um you know about the linux os or like uh uh, what's your favorite command in the Linux terminal? But they were, um, one thing I'd say is that um, don't ask, I mean, don't, um, uh, when you're in an interview, just think of it as a conversation and just, just um, you know, voice out what you know. And I think that that's like the most important thing. Like, don't get too like freaked out about, you know, like what you don't know, just, just, just be honest. Cause that's really, I think that's the most important thing uh, and it'll just flow, um, you know, as a natural conversation organically. <laughs> I don't know. That's very good. That's so don't pretend, be yourself like Rosanne just wrote. And Aisha said, that's fantastic. The ads usually, if you look at the ad of a job, it has the keywords. That will be the keywords for the interview. So there's the hint. Yeah, and um, to Aisha's point, if you don't know something, definitely come clean and say you don't know it. But if they ask you a question, question, don't just say, I don't know. And then leave silence. You could say, I don't really know. I haven't really touched that topic before. But if I had to make an educated guess, I would say A, B, and C. You can always get points for trying. And if you're somewhere in the right path, that definitely opens it up to the conversation where the recruiter may say, it's not entirely right, but you're close and this is why. So it's an opportunity for you to learn too. Yeah, 100%. And another thing is um, you can actually just ask the recruiter like, oh, like let's say you have a round of interviews. If you ask them like what kind of questions will they ask? Like they'll just, you know, they'll give you like a base understanding of what they might, what might come up if you're like trying to get prepared for it. So that's another way to prepare for interviews. Just ask. If they say, I can't tell you then whatever, but <laughs> it doesn't hurt to ask. That's a very good tip because the recruiter is in the recruiter's interest that you get hired, right? So they will do anything to help you. That's a fantastic tip. No, thank you so much. Those are, uh, those are great tips. And, um, you know, listen, I, I, I like to learn all the time. So I feel like what I love about these types of panels is I love to learn, right? Because even if we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about computer science and cybersecurity and, and things like that. And, and that's definitely not in my wheelhouse, but um, you can take these same practices, you can take these same tips and you can put them to practice in the industry you are interested um, in being a part of. Um, so this is another really, really great question. Um, 
What soft skills have you relied on most to navigate the nuances of working in tech? Aisha? Um, yeah, I think I touched upon this uh, earlier. I think one soft skill that I use would probably be like communication and, you know, like being able to talk to my teammates and, um, you know, figure out a solution or, you know, if I have any questions to get them across so that I can actually do my job. Because um, there were many times where I wouldn't and I'd try to figure things out myself. It would take like days to to get things done. But if you address those questions, um, it, you know, then you can really get your work done. So I think that's one big thing for me. Um, yeah, I don't have much to add on that. That's great, that's great. Um, Joe, do you wanna take this one? Sure. I don't know if it's technically a soft skill. Um, so if it's not, and I start going down a tangent, feel free to just say <laughs> shut up. But sure. um, I think a very important thing to working in tech and working anywhere in general is having a strong work ethic. Does that count? Yeah. Should I keep going? It, it, it counts. I definitely okay. think it counts. It that, counts. That's something that you can't, you can't really learn that. <laughs> Yeah, it's sometimes. very hard to learn. Yeah. And it can really get you far in life, just being passionate and just volunteering, just having that strong work ethic. Um, when I first started at KPMG on my second project, I was about three months into my job and three months into my first career, starting to learn how to adult and how to be this person that I had no idea how to be because I was still just learning. And I was working this project at one of the largest investment banks in the world. So they brought us in because they wanted to outsource their data loss prevention, um, e-discovery and insider threat um, investigations to KPMG. So we would go in, we would look at tickets, respond to them, see, all right, was this something real? Did somebody really try to steal data or try to harm the organization? Or was this just a false positive where something happened, the user didn't do anything wrong, so we just close it out. I was there as the least senior person on the team brand new to the company. It was a team of four people in the US, three people in India. Uh, so this global team and the person who was leading this project on the, day, on the day to day ended up leaving the company like early into this project. And somebody had to step up, somebody had to not only lead this project from a client facing point of view, but do all the extra work that came with it, like budgeting, uh, managing the resources, putting together status reports for the client. And I was the one who stepped up. I said, you know what, I could take on some of this stuff because the job, the day-to-day -day of the job itself was not overtly difficult, just took a little bit of time. So I was able to take on that additional responsibility. And then at four months into this project, uh, four months into me working at KPMG, I am leading this over a million dollar project. It was one of the most critical projects for KPMG at the time because it's a space we want to really break out into. And me four months in leading this thing and killing it because I had that work ethic to just stand up and say, you know what, I'll take this on. Nobody else is stepping up to take it on. So I'll do it. Um, raise my hand. It was extra work. Didn't get extra pay for it, but it definitely paid out in dividends as my career progressed and advanced. And it made me just such a better person and employee. Work ethics never fail. <laughs> no, it does not. They, they, yes. Teresa, you want to add something to that? Uh, these are all great points. Um, yeah, so one, of, one thing I would like to add is being open to uh, learn and change. As technology is con constantly changing, uh, you're never going to stop learning. So every day you, there's new technologies coming and you have to be able to keep up. So that's one of the things I would like to add. Um, I want to add on to, if I can. Yeah. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, I wanted to say, um, I think, like, um, I want to add on to Joe's point, actually, I think confidence is really important. I mean, that's something that I still need to work on, because I feel like, even when I know something, I, I, I'm always like, I sound unsure. Uh, and like, uh, in my previous job, like, um, I would be like the point of contact for, um, for like some automation work that I was doing. And like, even when I spoke to them, I sounded unsure when I actually knew what I was talking about. So I think confidence is really important and just like, you know, just own it and, and um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Confidence will get you very far, 
but you also want to be careful not to be overconfident and kind of tip your hand where you may not know what you're talking about, but you'll be confident and then you'll kind of go too far and everyone's going to know you're a fraud. So striking that balance is something that's easy enough to learn and you'll learn it by doing well and by failing. And another quote that I am shamelessly stealing, but I didn't steal the first one is fake it till you make it. And <laughs> that, that is my mantra in life is fake it till you make it. Okay. I love that. <laughs> um, so th this is a really good one. I think that this is um, very relevant, um, right? Just to the climate and everything that we've experienced uh, recently with um, with the pandemic and what we're still experiencing with the pandemic. Um, you know, in, in your experiences, um, how has COVID changed the consulting scene? Um, you know, how has that affected travel and businesses and, and how, how are your organizations, I guess, um, you know, with everything going on, how are your organizations now adjusting? Um, and, you know, are, are there now opportunities, right, for more remote work? And are things, um, you know, how are they just like uh, pivoting um, in this like new age of like, you know, now, now Omicron is here. <laughs> um, so how, how are your organizations pivoting? So Teresa, do you want to take that one first, since you might have a different viewpoint than us being on the IT side? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, personally, um, I work daily at the office. So um, I don't, I started remotely during the pandemic mm -hmm. and uh, when it was strictly, uh, when the mandates were, you know, very strict. Um, but as we were transitioning into uh, going into the office, it became uh, mandatory for um, a lot of us to come in, mm -hmm. but as far as working with the users, uh, it's like users that are consultants in general, um, based on communications, as well as uh, me helping them out. Um, it's, it's hybrid for them. So a lot of people have the opportunity to work both at home and in the office. So the choices varies. Um, but um, a lot of companies I know, they're, you know, right now they're, you know, uh, pushing forward to have a lot more people coming into the office um, to work um, more in that setting instead of um, say, staying home. So um, regarding, you know, applying for a position, a lot of new joiners would go about applying for a, a hybrid position or um, a more um, in office position instead of a remote position. I, 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 I muted myself. <laughs> now that makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, Joe, what has your experience been like? Yeah, so I got to see both sides, the pre-COVID consulting side mm -hmm. and the COVID consulting side. So pre-COVID, we would be at our clients every day, Monday through Thursday, and then we'd fly back on Friday or stay home on Friday. Um, and it was great. We would do client meetings, workshops, team dinners, team drinks. Um, but now that we switched over to fully remote with COVID, um, it's a lot harder to form those relationships and those networks with your clients, which then turns into it's harder to sell more work because most deals are done over a drink or a meal or on the golf course. It's hard to do that face to face on Zoom, just behind a screen. Um, I think our company adapted well to COVID because we already had a lot of infrastructure in place to be remote. Um, I was remote every Friday. So it just turned into a perpetual Friday where we would be remote. Um, I think in the future, uh, we're gonna find a nice balance. And I think it's something a lot of companies are still struggling with. What is that balance? Do we wanna bring everybody back? Do we wanna keep everybody home? And it's, we're seeing divisions in industry as well. So like financial services companies, they're bringing their people back. They're saying, you know what? You got to come back. If you can go out to a bar in New York, you can come to work. Um, we're seeing tech companies take a similar approach saying everyone come back, but the employees are pushing back and saying, no, 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 we don't want to go back. And for the first time in a long time, the employees are really dictating the market. Because in the tech space, cyber and technology in general is just so hot. Everyone's fighting for talent. There is a talent shortage. So if a company like Google is going to force everybody back, 
they're all going to leave and go to Facebook where they could work from home or Twitter or somewhere else. So I think striking that balance um, is key for consulting in general, because that will then dictate how we operate. Uh, we just came out with a recent policy saying work with purpose. So you can work wherever you want as long as you're doing it with purpose. So if your team is meeting on site, you got to go on site. If your client wants you like in LA, you got to go to LA. But if you don't have to do any of that, then yes, yeah, stay home. Cause there's really no reason to go into an office where nobody else is going to be. So I think that hybrid approach is still going to be shaking out over this next year. I think this winter will be very telling if it's a very mild winter for COVID where we don't see a lot of spikes in the numbers, I can see a lot more companies trying to go back because working from home is tough for high innovation um, companies. Um, if you're not in the same room workshopping, innovation is definitely being stymied. No, no, that that's, you know, thank you for, for answering that because like you said, right, it's, it's always about a balance because um, there is something to be said about that human contact and that interaction um, with colleagues and with people, and you know, you're in you're in those rooms, and and um, I feel like you get inspired, right, when people are with you, and it's a little bit it can, it can be harder with Zoom because you know it's like right now we're in Zoom, but I'm like trying to remember that I can't stare at your faces as much as I have to stare at um, at the camera, so stuff like that. Um, Aisha, is there something? Did you want to add um, to this piece? Yeah, sure. As well? uh, awesome. Yeah. So um, I joined Deloitte just three months ago. So this was like after COVID. Um, so I was remote. I mean, I am remote. And like the plan is that I will continue to be remote. Um, like the position that I applied for is fully virtual. Um, but I know that Deloitte came out with like a hybrid model where um, it doesn't apply to me, but for people who were working um um, who, who were working like it, at the Deloitte offices and at client sites, uh, they will have that balance where like some days they get to work at home and then other times they come into the office. Um, so um, I'm not sure like whether that hybrid model has already like been like enacted and if they're, you know, doing that right now. But um, as for me, I'm working at home and I'm going to continue to work at home. And uh, I don't think like I'll have like uh, client visits like in person um, so for right now at least um, but for the previous job that I worked at I was working uh, like in person I went to the office like every day uh, until COVID and I think like at that place um, people are continuing to just work at home which is nice but uh, like Joe said you have to find that balance with consulting because it's really difficult to do um, things virtually for for everything like for team meetings and stuff so Oh, exactly. It's, it's like, it's like what Joe said, you know, sometimes you just want to have drinks and virtual drinks just don't cut it. Right. <laughs> um, we have time for, I think, two more questions and then, uh, and then we'll close out. Um, but this question I, I really liked um, and I thought it was really relevant because um, I know that you all kind of mentioned um, earlier about the importance of networking, right. And making connections. Um, so do you have any suggestions on how to network? work and make connections. It seems wanting in the environment where meeting is really difficult. Um, Teresa, do you want to do you want to start this one? Um, yeah, sure. Um, well, your network starts where you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're at school, you have your faculties. So you have um, other alumni also um, that you interact with on a daily basis. And these are great ways to start. Um, another thing that I would like to suggest is, um, well, due to COVID, it's kind of difficult now, but um, there are certain um, uh, summits, events that they, um, that they're, that's available also. So based on research, there are some free events that you could attend. Um, online there, we have uh, uh, forums that are available as well in order for you to interact with other techs um, whether it's dev post, um, whether it's a uh, um, discord, based on how comfortable you feel in the roles that you would like to tackle. I would say these are great ways to, uh, to networks. Uh, these are people that are 
just like you uh, are looking for opportunities and, and they would also, uh, and also other professionals who are looking to improve into, in their roles. So based on uh, so many different experiences and in different opportunities, uh, everyone just helps each other that way. And um, due to our new settings now being remote, and I believe um, that's a great way to network is to find uh, these forums and websites and, 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 um, and uh, online opportunities to uh, create relationships with um, other professionals as well. That's great, thank you. Those are um, some really great suggestions. Um, you know, and, and you know, I will say for, for any alums or, or students on this call, another great way to network is to come to our events. Um, <laughs> alumni relations and annual giving, we have, um, we have a number of opportunities and events that we, um, that we really curate and we do that with you in mind. Um, so please do attend them. Uh, there's always different opportunities to network, to work on interviews, um, to get mentorship. As you can see in the chat, uh, my colleague Roseanne dropped in our, um, our calendar. Uh, we are currently updating it and getting it ready for spring 2022, but that's the same link. The link never changes. Um, so, so please do, please do join, join us because as Teresa said, um, your network starts where you are at and John Jay, uh, is your network. Um, Aisha, uh, do you have, um, any advice, uh, for anyone or for anyone on this call just about, you know, about networking and, and how they might be able to, to do so, especially in this climate or even advice for somebody who isn't really comfortable, uh, with networking? Um, I think I'd say like, uh, because I, I'm one of those people who are like very like introverted. So like during those kind of events, I'm, I'm pretty shy to, to like um, go forward and go to like a table to, to talk about my experiences and stuff. But I think one good way to do that is um, it's important to like have a buddy that you could just like go with to, to tables and, and talk to other people um, so that you're not alone and you're not, you're not doing it alone. Um, I think that's helped me like I um, find other people to like go to like networking events to um, and that just that helps because um, it, it gives you a little bit of confidence and um, it helps you kind of get through that and yeah it's, I think that's a nice way to network. I like that a lot bring a networking buddy it never mm -hmm. it never hurts right. Um, Joe do you want to close this out uh, with the Sure. So um, I like your idea. You should bring in a networking buddy. Um, I fake it till I make it being an extrovert. Um, when I go to those events, I definitely get a little freaked out uh, meeting all those new people and trying to really put my best foot forward. So I think having somebody with you would be beneficial to uh, get over those nerves and to kick off those conversations. That way you're not just like standing in the corner alone, unapproachable. Um, I'd I have never really been to one of the networking events before. I should start going to in-person events just to grow my network. Um, I usually do it through LinkedIn. Um, if I find somebody who posted something interesting, I'll connect with them. I'll send them a message, um, tell them a little bit about myself and try to set up a coffee chat. Um, but other than that, I think, um, Roseanne, yes, I should go to those uh, networking events. Um, I think if I think we should probably have one at John Jay since you're uh, taking requests. Very right, good. Well, oh, that's great. Uh, so we didn't get to all the questions, uh, but just to let you all know, uh, for everyone on this um, on this call, um, what I will do is I will save the questions and then I will share them with our panelists to see if we can't help get you all the answers that you need. Um, but you know, thank you all for your time. Uh, thank you for being here today. As Roseanne, uh, Roseanne, our director of um, alumni engagement, she she always says this. Um, you know, you can spend an hour doing anything, and you chose to spend an hour with us. Uh, thank you so much for our amazing panel, um, for taking the time to answer these really great questions and to give um, some really wonderful advice and insight. Um, because I think that these are really great opportunities to learn. Um, off top, is there anything that you would like to add? 
Well, this is everything I ever want from a panel like this. Uh, and the last question is very important actually because networking is life now. Um, so, and uh, I think Teresa, you know, made my day by saying that you did network where you are and that applies everywhere, wherever you are. So join the pro students' professional organizations in the college, right? You will really like their activities and they will really help you network outside as well as inside. That's all I would say. No, thank you so much. Um, okay. And, and thank then, you, the alumni department. Fantastic job you did. Ah, uh, thank you. This has been really exciting. Um, and we'd love to do uh, more, more things like this. Um, we'd love to provide these spaces um, for learning and just opportunities for people to you know, come together and ask questions that you otherwise wouldn't be comfortable asking. Um, it's always great to hear people um, share their experiences, especially just in their careers. And I think it also helps people feel less alone, right, in the things that they might be struggling with. Um, Roseanne, yes. I saw you on mute. Yes, yes. I really just wanted to first thank my colleague, Megan. I got stuck in some traffic. Um, and as always, she has my back and I decided to just take a back seat to her wonderful um, work here. And I wanted to thank all of you, our wonderful alumni. And I always like to share with the audience that I've never met an alum from John Jay who has said no to wanting to share their time and their talent with you, with students, with young alum, with me as a staff person. Um, the worst I've ever heard, and it's not even bad, it's good time management, is not this semester, call me next semester. And then when I call them next semester, they like sign me up. So if there are any alum in the audience who would love to participate, learn more, um, I put my email and our alumni email in the chat. Um, Afta, Professor Ahmad, thank you so much for being here uh, and, and hosting and moderating. And I look forward to doing many, many more of these. Um, Joe came to me several months ago. What can we do to kind of stimulate some mentorship ideas? And this is actually the brainchild of that conversation. And I expect that we will be doing more. So stay tuned. This was a great um, number of people here. We plan to do more stuff. And yes, I take requests. So if you have a different topic or something much more focused that you want us to find alum to talk about, I'm happy to do the legwork and I'm a LinkedIn stalker. I will find the alum, the alums who can answer the questions for you and I will put them in front of you. So thank you everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Be safe and we'll be back next semester with more good stuff. So thank you.